Hey guys, my name is JC, and welcome to today's gameplay video featuring Hanada Dawncrowned. We are going to put her to the test to see if she really lives up to her reputation as a kill on sight commander. If you enjoy the deck, swing by the channel where you'll find a deck tech explaining all the card choices as well as the overall strategy. But without further ado, let's get to the game. Okay, so it looks like we won the die roll. We're happy to see that. We are going to definitely go first. So looking at our opening hand, we have quite a few lands, which is good because we don't have a lot of mana acceleration in the deck. Goldspan Dragon is going to be nice to curve into in case Hanada gets removed. Even better if it doesn't. And Apostle's Blessing is some protection. So I think we definitely keep this one. And we draw a Distorting Wake for turn. So that's going to be great for us. It's our Cyclonic Rift. So we'll definitely be able to hold on to that when it starts getting a little too crazy out there. But for our turn, I think we're just going to simply play the Deserted Beach. It'll enter tapped and we'll pass the turn. Looks like Carador just plays a Marsh Flats and cracks it. And they just put a land into play a Savannah. And they tap out for a Lanawar Elves. And it looks like they leave the turn there. Neheb just plays a Mountain. And that's it for them. And Riel plays a Mountain into a Soul Ring. Very good start for them. And Riel might be the player that we're going to be most concerned with. Not knowing anything else and how the board state hasn't developed yet. Just because they're going to probably have a lot of counter magic. Going to make it a little harder for some of our spells to get through. And they also cast a Thought Vessel. So quite the turn one play for them. So we draw another land. So we've certainly got enough lands in our hand now. We, we hope the deck gives us a little more as we go further. So I think for us we'll just play the Training Center. And we'll bluff some counter magic and pass the turn there. Carador just plays a land. And they cast a Hermit Druid, probably one of the best cards in their deck. You can pay a green tap, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a basic land card. Put that card into your hand and all other cards revealed this way into your graveyard. So if that thing sticks around, um, we might be in a little bit of trouble. That's going to fill Carador's graveyard up quite nicely. Neheb just plays a land into a Mind Stone. And they leave it there. Riel plays a Mountain, so they don't have their source of blue mana yet. So I don't think we'll be seeing Riel on this turn. No, they cast a Flame Wake Phoenix. A 2-2 Fly in Haste. It attacks each combat if able. And Ferocious at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you control a creature with power 4 or greater, you can pay red if you do return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay. We're happy to see that. The longer we can keep Riel off the field, the better. Because Riel is such a good card draw engine. It can really keep your hands full without too much trouble at all. Sort of like Hanada, it really breaks apart some of those discard spells that just never got played. That's what I really love about Riel. Or really any commander that can actually just take cards that people don't play and then all of a sudden make them fantastic. Okay, so we see some flying haste and they are coming in at us. So I say they're going to have their eyes on us just as much as we're going to have our eyes on them. And unfortunately, we have a scoop there. So I don't know what happened, but it looks like the Neheb player didn't want any more of this game. Nothing in chat suggested anything wrong, so unfortunately sometimes this happens on Magic Online where people will scoop if they don't get a good hand or something else doesn't go right for them. And we draw an Inscription of Insight, so that's good. That's that's a bit of card draw for us as well as a bounce spell, so unfortunately we can't use it just yet on that Hermit Druid, which we would really, really like to do. So I think otherwise we're just going to play an island here and pass the turn and just hope things don't get too crazy. That is one one downside or one weakness of our, our build of Hanada here is because we do tend to play a bit more of a slower game. We can get punished if one or a few players get off to a really fast start. So Carador activates Hermit Druid. And so it looks like off their Hermit Druid, they only hit one card going into their graveyard. So that was a bit of a whiff for them. And they also cast a Carrion Feeder here. So we might have gotten a little fortunate there. I don't know if we're going to be that lucky next turn though. And that is it for their turn. And notably, they do leave two mana up, so we'll see if they do run a bit of interaction in that deck. They might be holding it up for Riel or Hanada. Hanada's certainly got a bit of a reputation as of recording this. Hanada was only just spoiled, and a lot of people are quite afraid of her ability, so we have to be prepared for that hate. So Riel gets their island, and they do cast Riel here. We don't have anything to say about that, so it will resolve. Now, if we're lucky here, and the, the one red mana they have up doesn't have a red elemental blast or similar in their hand, then we'll be able to resolve Hanada here with a bit of protection. And it looks like this time they swing their, their Phoenix in over at the Carador player, and they leave the turn there. 
So like I said, we got to really hope we're lucky here. They don't have a Pyroblast or a Red Elemental Blast. We draw another land. So we'll get down the Sea of Clouds here. Let's see how lucky we are. Let's try to resolve our commander. And it resolves. So we're very, very happy to see that now. So we're just going to leave the turn there. And we have protection up. So we're in a good spot at the moment. Now let's see if Carador has a little more luck on their side this time when they activate their Hermit Druid. Okay, well they got a lot more better hits there. They had a Karmic Guide, Idol on a Rhetoric. So we can see a bit of a, a Staxi Taxi package there. Kasali Pride Mage for a bit of removal. Altar of Dementia. Atalia. Or Thalia, depending on how you like to say it. So definitely more of a Taxi Staxi build there. We've been lucky so far we haven't seen any of those effects come down on the board just yet. But it's not going to be too long with Carador there. And we do see their commander come down. So for those of you that don't know, Carador costs one less to cast for each creature card in, the, in your graveyard or their graveyard. And once during each of your turns, you may cast a creature spell from your graveyard. And it looks like they leave the turn there. Now we're going to see if Riel has one of their mass draw, draw effects in hands. We really hope not. They just play a land. Now Riel was looking like they were tapping down their mana and then they untapped it. They might be realizing... Hanada's tax effect of costing one more to cast for each target, and they do. So they have to pay two mana for a Pongify, and they are targeting Carador here. We have no problem with that at all. We're actually quite happy to see that. I'm guessing Riel's quite worried about the number of different creatures in there, particularly the only casting one spell per turn. It doesn't slow them down massively, but it certainly does slow them down a bit. They sacrifice it using Carrion Feeder, so Carrion Feeder gets a plus one plus one counter. Now they move to combat. Are they going to swing in? I don't think they're going to be swinging in at us, seeing as we've got a pretty good blocker up in the way. And nope, they just swing over at the Carador player. And it looks like they leave it there. With mana up, yes, but they only have two cards in hand, so I'm not feeling awfully worried at the moment. So we draw a Liquid Metal Torque. So we've got a little bit of ramp there. Now we have a few different choices. We can certainly just try to play out our Goldspan Dragon and start generating a lot more mana quickly. We could cast the Distorting Wake here as well. And essentially Cyclonic Rift, our opponents time lock them a little bit. I mean, if Riel has the counter, they have the counter. But to be honest, I think I want to hold on to the Distorting Wake just a little bit longer. So what I think we'll do here, we will play our land for turn. Which will get down one of our islands. And I'm actually going to get our Liquid Metal Torque down first, just to ramp us a little bit further. And I'm going to test the waters a little bit. I'm actually going to try to bounce Riel and the Hermit Druid here. And that goes through without a problem at all. So I don't think... Riel does have any interaction in their hand, or if they do, they're holding it up and just waiting a little bit longer. I mean, they do have the mana to be able to cast Riel, so they really might be saving it for something a little more threatening. So I think we'll just move into combat here, and we will get some damage in on the Riel player, because I'm still more worried about them at the moment than what I am the Carador player. That might change very quickly, but just at the moment, we'll try to get a little bit of damage in on them, and then we will pass the turn there. So Carador just plays a land, and they cast an Ashnod's Altar. That is quite a dangerous card in their deck, especially considering the way they can recur things and they have quite cheap bodies out at the moment. But we can't do anything about that just yet. Though Distorting Wake is starting to look a lot more better at the moment. And they just recast their Hermit Druid. And they just move through combat and leave the turn there. So the question now is, do we get lucky again and Riel has nothing to cast to refill their hand? Because I've played against Riel quite a few times and this isn't usually the case where their hand isn't pretty full after they resolve their commander. So they just recast their commander again. And yep, now we see a careful study being cast. Draw two cards, then discard two cards. So we will let that go through. Once again though, that does take them out of their blue mana, so it's very likely that we're going to have a turn to be able to do what we want to. So they get their Riel trigger now. Drawing based on how much they discard, just for the first time each turn. So Goldspan Dragon, getting that result here looks pretty good. And they do play an island here, so we're, we're not out of the blue mana phase, and a Mox Amber. So we co certainly could be looking at some interaction, but they are down to two cards in hand. And we did see last time they didn't interact in any way. Now they move to combat, and they once again swing in at the Carador player with their Phoenix. And they leave it there for turn. So let's hope we get a good draw here. And Sahili's Artistry isn't bad at all. That's actually quite good with Goldspan Dragon in play. Now, I don't think that changes our plan at all. I think our turn here should be get Goldspan Dragon down. Hopefully, if that resolves, then we can move to attack, generate a treasure, and we should have enough mana to be able to cut, cast Distort in Wake and set our opponents back a little bit and that start to swing the tempo more towards our way. So let's see how we go with it. So we'll get our mana confluence down first. Red, red. And we'll cast Goldspan Dragon. 
Now this is the thing about Hanada, you never really know when it's second ability of your opponent's casting casting their spells and costing one more to target is actually kicking in. So our opponent could have interaction here, but they might not have enough mana to cast it. I mean, it's not very likely, seeing as they have five mana. They probably don't have it in hand, but that is, yeah, that's one thing with Hanadi. You just really don't know how often that ability is really helping you out here. So we've resolved that now. I think we want to move to combat here. Just with the Goldspan Dragon, I'd like to keep Hanada back as a blocker. Just to preserve our life total a little bit more. And so I am going to swing in at the real player again. We will make our treasure token. Okay, and so in our second main phase, we're going to try casting our Distorting Wake here. We'll target all of our opponent's non-land permanents. And let's see if this resolves. And it looks like it does. So I think we've done more than enough this turn. We're just going to sit back past the turn. Once we get into some card draw, that's when we're going to be really off to the races at the moment. So we've certainly slowed down our opponents, but the game definitely isn't ours yet. And so Carador just replays their Lanoir Elves. And now they're Carrion Feeder. And once again, they're Hermit Druid. And we just see another land come down. And it looks like that's it for Carador. Now let's see if Riel just spends the turn redeploying all the other things we saw this turn, or their, their plan changes to some other direction. Okay, so they recast their Soul Ring, and their Mox Amber, and now we see their Commander once again, and now we see a Thought Vessel being cast. So they're going to be happy to have that once they start drawing a lot of cards. And here we, we see a nice big draw spell, Ideas Unbound. Draw three cards, discard three cards at the beginning of the next end step. So I think Riel's definitely showing here why we see them as the biggest threat. And they cast a Lion's Eye Diamond now. So I think our turn next turn is going to be pretty clear. Unless we draw something that drastically changes what we should be doing. It's going to be Sahili's Artistry, copy our Goldspan Dragon, and then try to beat down on Riel as quickly as possible before they get too much card advantage going. And they cast a Wayfarer's Bobble. Because now that they've got access to a lot of mana and a lot of cards, they're probably just going to be able to outgrind us. I'm certainly not counting Carador out just yet, but... Riel is just really starting to get ahead here. And so they sacrifice their Lion's Eye Diamond, and then they're going to use some of that mana for a Wayfarer's Bobble. They're going to search for a basic land and put it into play tapped. And now their Flame Wake Phoenix triggers, but they don't have the mana to get it back, unfortunately. It costs one red, and they only have one blue available. And so now they're going to discard three cards. Okay, so for our turn, we draw a Triome, which isn't what we want to see at the moment. So we will play that for turn. And then I think our choice is pretty simple here. We're just going to cast our Sahili's Artistry. Goldspan Dragon will definitely be one target. So what I think we're actually going to do here, we're going to use our Liquid Metal Torque to turn our Goldspan Dragon into an artifact until end of turn. And then now we're going to cast Sahili's Artistry and we're actually going to be able to make two copies of Goldspan Dragon because we can create a token that's a copy of target artifact, which Goldspan is now, and a copy of target creature. So now you can see why we have Liquid Metal Torque in the deck, just for moments like this where we can be a little bit tricky. So we'll choose Goldspan Dragon, we'll pay our 5 mana. Because we targeted Goldspan Dragon, we are going to get a treasure token from that. And now this should definitely resolve, unless the Carador player has something to say about it. But I don't think they would have, I'm sure they would have cast something by now. And now we have 3 hasty Goldspan Dragons! So we're just going to move straight to combat here. We'll send Hanada and 2 dragons over towards the Riel player. And then we'll send one of our dragons over at the Carador player, because we don't want to forget about them either. And that will trigger all three of our Goldspan Dragons, making us another three treasures, so we're definitely accumulating mana up here. At this point, we're not too worried if Hanada gets removed, because we're going to have more than enough mana to be able to get it back. So that damage goes through. And for us, we don't have anything else we want to do, so we're just going to pass the turn there. So right now, things are looking pretty good for us. It's not likely we're going to see a board wipe from the Carador player, but they do have seven cards in hand, so they may still have an answer to some of the things we're doing. And we do only have one protection piece in our hand. We may not even want to use it at the moment because, like I mentioned earlier, we can just replay it again. And a Diabolic Intent, so they are going to be able to go look for something. And it may very well be a board wipe here. So the game's still afoot, that's for sure. We, we certainly haven't locked this down in the bag. Our top decks are going to be really what matters here. We, we really want to get into one of our draw spells. And now they cast Renegade Rallyer. When it enters the battlefield, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, return target permanent card with mana value 2 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, let's see what they get here. And it looks like they're targeting their Altar of Dementia. And now they cast Safi Eric's Daughter. You sacrifice it. When target creature is put into your graveyard this turn, return that card to the battlefield. 
So I think things have certainly changed around in that one turn. I think now our eyes are definitely on Carador here. So now they sacrifice Safi, and they're targeting their Renegade Rallyer here. And so now they're targeting us with the mill effect. And now it looks like they're going to be repeating that loop. So unfortunately, I think the game has gotten away from us here. I think Carador's gotten into an infinite loop where they can just keep doing that recursion cycle of sacking Safi, bringing back the other creature, milling us, and then milling both of us out until we hit our upkeep, go to draw a card, and we lose the game. So well done to Carador for being able to get their combo online there. So I think we'll just call GG here to our opponent so they don't have to keep going through that. And that is the game. So thank you for joining me today, guys. Let's go to the wrap up and discuss what happened. So overall, I don't think we could have done anything differently to change the outcome of that game. Carador was able to get out one of the best cards in their deck early. And once it milled their graveyard and filled it up with one part of their combo piece, they were able to cast a tutor and find the second half of it to combo out and close out the game. Riel was off to a great start having access to a lot of mana early and eventually some card draw, but like us, they needed more time to get the key pieces they need to set themselves ahead of the game. Hanada performed pretty much like we hoped it would, and we got to see some really cool interactions with our cards. In particular, Distorting Wake, which ended up being a 3 mana Cyclonic Rift, and Sahili's Artistry, which made 3 copies of Goldspan Dragon. It was just a real shame that the Neheb player scooped because the outcome of that game for all players could have been very different if they had stayed. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video, but more importantly, I hope it gave you some inspiration to either build or play your own Hanada list. Until next time, guys.